Hey, hey, sports fans, PB and Z Sports Chaos, we're coming back at you. And guess what? I'm wearing my mask because Tommy's within six feet of me. He's been coughing lately, or maybe he's just choking. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But I am drinking his white claw, so hang on. We got a good one coming for you. All right. We're going to do this week a new segment. PB's got his A to Z list. A being his good list. Z being his worst list. You'll hear more about that during the football segment. Hey, little two-minute drill real quick, PB. The Bruins, they announced they are looking for outdoor venues due to COVID. They're going to play some outdoor games this season, most of the season possibly. Who knows? They're looking at Fenway, of course. NHL just came out today and said we're going to have a 52 or 56-game schedule starting in mid-January. Can't wait. I may try to go to one of those games outdoors. That should be fun. For sure. Sarah Fuller, we mentioned her last week. I saw you post her picture on our Facebook when she kicked off. She was going to be the kicker again this week, but they had to pull the plug on the game. Vandy and the opponent, I think, I think it's Missouri. I uh, know they played Missouri last week. I think they were supposed to play, but the game got called because of COVID. I hope she gets to play next week. I want to see her kick in the game an extra point or a field goal, don't you? That'd be great. That'd be awesome to see. Oh, man. Hey, speaking of highlights of football, we'll talk about it momentarily in college football. This kid, Jared Patterson of Buffalo last week, I got to mention this, 409 yards rushing, eight TDs. It was actually a close game for a while. They won 70 to 41, Buffalo did in a conference game. But PB, it's his second straight game over 300 yards and four plus uh, three plus touchdowns. He now has, get this, in his last two games, Nearly 800 yards and 10 touchdowns. That's a season for most running backs in college. Oh, my God. Yeah. Unbelievable. Wow. Wow. Hey, big news in the NFL just came out. Arizona is going to host the San Francisco 49ers as the home team for the next two weeks or next two or three weeks, right? 49ers going to play their home games out of San Francisco. They're going to play in Arizona. Thank you, Arizona, for giving them a home field. And, by the way, we mentioned it last week. Tyson and Roy Jones. I caught some of the highlights. I don't know if you saw it. Roy was running the whole night long. Tyson managed to land some punches two to one. It was a draw. I don't know how, because like I said, Tyson outlanded him two to one. And by the way, for 54 years old, Tyson looked scary fast. Scary fast. He's going to do it again. We'll see what happens. All right. Hey, FSU, down there at York State. What is going on? Again, the team travels to the Florida State game, shows up, goes to the field the morning of the game, and they postpone it again due to COVID. Somebody's going to take charge down there in Tallahassee. Do you, Tallahassee, do you agree? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the program itself was in disarray to begin with, and then they do this to their opponents on top of that. It's just Twice in a row. This is unbelievable. Right. Hey, last week, Arizona absolutely trounced our Auburn. We're going to talk college football now. 42 to 13. I didn't think they would cover the 24 points. They easily did. G Money, who's on the show once in a while, says Alabama needs to be fi favored every game by two touchdowns. I have to agree at this point in time. What do you think? Yeah. Um, but, but you know what? G Money also said last week that, that, that uh, you had the Alabama game right and I had the Michigan game right. <laughs> and I had the Michigan game wrong, my only loss, and you had the Alabama game wrong, your only loss. So I know it. Uh, but we still both went three and one, so we did. Yeah. Hey, speaking of football in college, Ohio State, again, they may miss this week, PB. We're going to talk about this. I'm going to let you go on about this in a minute because you had a lot of thoughts at the beginning of the year about them and the college football players. They may not play. Right now, it's still up in the air if they're going to play tomorrow. Ryan Day, their coach, will not be there. But now, this is the funny thing. The Big Ten is going to play some tricks to try to get – them in the college football playoffs, even if they don't have the six games requisite to be in the Big Ten championship, they're going to let them play a six game the day of the championship against somebody else, probably some powder puff team, so they get yeah. the six games and six wins. Yeah. I mean, is this bad for college football? Yeah, it is, it is. I think it is. And um, if you look at the whole college football playoff process, it, it is objective. It is subjective, right? There, it's not an objective thing. I mean, the NFL, you have a clear win-loss record, and then there's tiebreaker rules that dictate whether or not you hire or hire in a seed than someone else. Right. And none of that in college football. College football is just a bunch of guys saying, oh, they beat this team and didn't beat this team and they won by this much, so we're going to put them in or not put them in. So 
because of the subjective nature of it, it's flawed to begin with. Now you layer in on top of that COVID in this whole season, you layer on top of that that the Big Ten didn't even play their first game until about a month ago. And then they, you layer in the fact that they said you have to play a minimum six games and they might not even play those six games. So I'm going to stand by what I said since the beginning that a Big Ten team shouldn't be in the college football playoff discussion. They chose as a conference to not participate in the season for six or eight weeks, whatever it was, before they played their first game. That's basically writing off your ticket to the college football playoff. A one-loss team like Florida or A&M should be in that fourth spot over Ohio State all day long, no question asked. Or, or a non-Power 5, and we got a game we're going to pick in a few minutes here, is two undefeated teams that are 9-0 playing this weekend. And I think one of those winners deserves some credit, along with Cincinnati, who's also undefeated. PB, my thought on this is, they're giving Ohio State a paper championship. Basically, they say, you look good on paper. You don't have to play any games. No worry about injuries or anything like that. It's and you get stupid. automatically into the bowl. Into it's the stupid. It's absolutely stupid. I'm with you. I'm absolutely with you. This can't happen. It's going to be the worst thing that happened for college football. All right, let's do some picks real quick here, and then we'll get on to NFL. First one, BC goes to Virginia. Virginia's a full-point favorite. I don't know what people are looking at. BC's played very well. Should have beat North Carolina. Played well against Clemson. Didn't look so good at the end against Notre Dame, but held in for half. What do you think? Yeah, and you give me four points with BC. And this one, I don't think – I think it's a no-brainer. I'm taking Boston College all day. I am as well. I am as well. All right. This is a decent game. I'm a little bit surprised by the spread, given what Alabama did to Auburn last week. Texas a and is only favored by six and a half. It is in Auburn, but it still seems low. What do you think? Yeah, well, a and M's only losses to Alabama, right? And they've beaten everybody else, including Florida. Um, I'm going to lay the points. I'm going to take A&M in this one. Yeah, I, I am as well. I am as well. All right. Indiana, number 12 in the country, goes to number 16, Wisconsin, who's a 14-point favorite. Now, I know Indy lost their quarterback last night, Michael Penix Jr. He's a great player for them. But is that a 14-point swing? I think it is. I think the whole reason why that team has been so successful is because of that Ooh. quarterback. And without him, I, I just don't see them doing the same thing. I mean, think about the, the influence and – uh, you know, the, the games he put in to, to what, what has happened so far in Indiana. And I just don't think they can hang in there. Wisconsin's a good team, and they're tough. And I could just see Wisconsin winning this game. So I'm going to lay the points, the 14, and I'm going to take the Badgers. So I'm going to go back to your argument about why no Big Ten teams should be in the championship. I have not seen enough eye candy from Wisconsin yet. They've lost a few games already due to COVID. They couldn't play. We haven't seen enough of them. I'm not so sure they really are that good. Again, it's a paper title we're giving them. I'm going to take the points. I'm going to go with Indiana. Okay. There's that difference. All right. Last one. BYU goes to Coastal Carolina. ESPN game day is going to be there. Originally, it was supposed to be Liberty at Coastal Carolina. Liberty came down with COVID on 48 hours notice. BYU now has to flip the script and go down to Carolina and play Coastal Carolina. Ten-point favorite, though, BYU. What do you think? Yeah, and, and both these teams are undefeated? Yes, 9-0. First time in the college football playoff era, two 9-0 teams have played this late. Yeah, but BYU is 9-0 with some, you know, some decent games under their belt. Coastal Carolina – Again, we had to pick Liberty a couple weeks ago. I just had nothing to really go off of uh, taking Liberty, and fortunately they, they did cover. They didn't win, but they covered. Um, Coastal Carolina, same deal. I just don't know enough about them, and, and it's hard for me to comment. BYU has some pretty solid wins on their belt. Ten points is not a ton of points in college, so no. wait, I'm going to weigh the ten and, and go with BYU here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take what you just said, not, that we don't know enough about Coastal Carolina, nor does BYU. And I think Coastal Carolina surprises them. They have a very tricky offense. They can run it with a triple option, and they can play spread as well. You don't see that two dimensions out of one team. So I'm going to take Coastal Carolina. All right. Yeah, different on two this week. Games. We'll see. Yeah. All right, man. All right. Let's do NFL. Hey, last week, what a week. Kendall Hinton is now a household name in the NFL. <laughs> A guy that was a retail salesman and a backup player on the practice squad for the Denver Broncos at wide receiver, started at quarterback, 
didn't look good. He got crushed, had one completion, two interceptions. By the way, Taysom Hill was the other quarterback. PB, is that the first time? Was Taysom Hill listed as a quarterback at the beginning of the year in um, fantasy? Um, no, he was listed as a tight end. Um, yeah, and, and Hinton wasn't even on the, on the board. So. so is that the first time we had two non-quarterbacks in the NFL start an NFL game? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> wow. All right. Hey, and as we predicted all along to the day, we said Detroit Lions would fire Matt Patricia on Saturday. And sure enough, about noontime, the memo came out. We were right. Patricia and Bob Quinn, the GM, both are fired. PB, I can ask you a question. That now means that 10 X. Belichick assistants have been coaches in the NFL. They have a 417 winning percentage. Only two of them have a winning record. Can you name them? Well, I, I would say Vrabel's got to be one of them. He wasn't an assistant. But he was on the staff. I don't think they, I don't think they call him as an assistant, though, so. Oh, all right. I, Vrabel would have been one. Okay, so you're not counting him. It's not. Well, I don't have the other. I don't know who the other one is. So we'll count them just for the heck yeah. of it. But who, who do you think's the other one? It's definitely not Romeo Cronell. It's not Josh McDaniel. I'm going to go just because they, they did make the playoffs one and done like three or four years in a row. Uh, Bill O'Brien with the with the Texans. That's my pick as well. I haven't. I, you know what? I didn't look it up beforehand, but I think it's Bill O'Brien. I have a funny feeling if it's not Vrabel because he wasn't truly an assistant, it might have been Josh. I don't know, but I can't think of the other guy otherwise. Josh McDaniel definitely had a losing record. He, he did? Okay. He I don't definitely had a losing record. Once with it might really, be. It he might was be. only there like three years, right? Yeah, but it might be great. We might be talking maybe even two. I think one and a half. A ju no, just one and a half. He made the playoffs with Tim Tebow, remember? Was he, was he with them then? Okay. Yeah, he was the coach. He was the All right, coach. we'll have to research that a little bit. So yeah, yeah. we're definitely in agreement on Bill O'Brien, and the other one may be Vrabel, but – Okay, we'll see. I don't know who else it could be. All, All right, right, hey, Pittsburgh remains undefeated after that game against the Ravens on Wednesday night. I love watching a 450 game or whatever time it was on a Wednesday night. PB, I can ask the question, though. Do the Steelers go undefeated? Five nope. games left. Nope, no. Who they, they lose to? They're not going undefeated. Here's the thing. They, they have three tough games on their schedule left. They have to they go. They do, yep. They're going to go to Buffalo. That's going to be yep. tough. Then they got to play Indy back in Indianapolis, and with a healthy defense, Indy could give them some, some problems. Yeah. Okay? And then they have to go into Cleveland on the last game of the year. Here's the thing with that game. If, if Kansas City drops another game and goes to two losses, the question will be, will Pittsburgh rest their players or will they go for this perfect season? Because if they if Kansas City loses another game, they'll have the one seed wrapped up. They'll be playing right. the game for no other reason. If they want to win a Super Bowl, they should sit their plays. But if they want right. to win sixteen and zero like the Patriots back in two thousand seven, and then lose the Super Bowl, they can go ahead and start their people. But if they play it smart and rest their players, then Cleveland should win that game theoretically. So a lot of things have to happen right for the Steelers to go undefeated. I'm not saying they can't. But my prediction is that they don't. Okay. I'm kind of with you. By the way, the Redskins will not be an easy out with that front seven of the Redskins. They will pressure Rotsberger. That's a good one, too. Yep. All right. All right. Hey, DK Metcalf, real quick. Is he changing the way defenses and coaches, I mean, general managers have to draft cornerbacks going, going on from now on? You can't have a 5'11 guy got him. I mean, he's, he's just a, he's a beast. And, I mean, I, I'll, just, I'll remember him in the combine. And he wasn't really on a lot of people's board. He wasn't a top two or three third round pick even, right? And he goes into the camp, and I mean, into the um, combine, and he's just lighting up every statistic. And there's been guys in the past who've lit up, statistically have lit things up, but then go into the league and they, they can't play, right? Right. He's not one of them. Um, and he is the real deal. I mean, he's, he's definitely a, a top three, top five wide receiver in this league, I think, at this point in time. And going forward, I think we'll continue to hold that, um, that title. Darius Slay, a good, good cornerback, an all-pro candidate, could not match up physically with him. Just got out physical. He's just too small, right? So you yeah. can't have five, ten corners playing against guys like that. If more, more DKs come to the league, oh, my God. All right. 
Here we go, fans. We're going to do our segment, PB's A to Z list. A being his best list, Z being his list of worst. This week, he's going to give us his A list, top five teams in the NFL right now. What do you got, okay. PB? All right, I'm going to go right down number one to number five. Number one, no question asked, Kansas City Chiefs. I wish we should go the other way and give us a little suspense. No, no, I'm going to go. All right. Go this way. Number two. New Orleans Saints. Number three, Pittsburgh Steelers. Number four, Green Bay Packers. And this might surprise people. This is why I was keeping this one last. Number five right now for me, based on what happened last week, Tennessee Titans. I don't know. I, I agree with Tennessee. You're right. They, they've done a lot. I, I've been on their bandwagon all year. I didn't want to pick the Colts last week, and I did. But I'm with that. I can't see being Pittsburgh three, though. I, at the end of the day, New Orleans, I mean, they're my top seed in the NFC. That's my prediction. I stick with it. But you got to give 11-0 credit. And by the way, if for whatever reason Drew Brees can't play, Pittsburgh will eat up Taysom Hill. So they're going to be number two in my mind. Um, other than that, I, I'm okay with them. I would definitely move um, them up. Green Bay. I still can't get over my head that they got blown out by Tampa Bay, who's not looked good lately. So we'll see. All right. Good, not, a good, not a bad list, brother. brother. Not a bad list. All right. Let's do your Z list. The worst five quarterbacks in the NFL. All right. So worst five quarterbacks right now in the NFL. And the qualifying quarterbacks for discussion, they have to be QBR qualified. And to be QBR qualified means you have to be in 20 – Action plays, that's the definition by the NFL. You have to be in 20 action plays per game that your team has played. Doesn't matter if you're in the game or not. So that means through 12 weeks, you have to have had 240 action plays under center to be qualified, okay? Okay. So I'm going to go from my worst to my fifth worst. So absolute worst, bottom of the barrel, no questions asked, Sam Darnold. Um, Sam Darnold, obviously – has not won a game. Um, he has the lowest quarterback rating, the lowest passer rating, the third worst completion percentage, and the least amount of yards passed out of QBR qualifying quarterback. So he wow. is okay. one by far worst. Second worst, Drew Locke. Drew Locke has the lowest QBR and the second lowest passer rating behind Sam Donald. He also has the worst completion percentage in the entire NFL. And he's also number four in interceptions thrown. So he is the second worst. My third worst quarterback in the entire NFL is Carson Wentz. Carson, oh, wow. This guy is a joke shop in Philadelphia, an absolute joke. He's number one in the NFL by far in interceptions thrown. Turtles, yeah. Okay. He the, has the second lowest completion percentage in the NFL at 58.1, and he has the worst quarterback rating among any quarterback who's played in at least nine games. So he is definitely the third worst quarterback. Those okay. three are on the way. Sam Donald, Drew Locke, Carson Wentz, put him to bed. The next two are up for debate. This might surprise a few people. The fourth worst quarterback, and let me justify why – and then I'll tell you who it is. The least amount of yards thrown in quarterbacks who have played in nine games or more. He has the fourth fewest touchdowns thrown out of quarterbacks who have played in nine games or more. He has the sixth worst quarterback rating out of quarterbacks who have played in nine games or more. And out of all quarterbacks that qualify in the QBR, he has the seventh worst completion percentage. This is... Lamar Jackson. So Lamar. Oh, okay. Wow. He, I thought it was going to be Cam Newton, but until the last stat. Yeah, okay. No, no, Cam Newton. Cam Newton's per completion percentage is in the like high. Yeah, that's when you, when you said that stat, I, I knew it wasn't him. Yeah. Um, so Lamar Jackson is my fourth worst quarterback, and this may surprise my couple honorable mentions that I'm not putting in here is um, Gardner Minshew and Nick Mullins. They did not make my list because you have decent completion percentages. And the object of the game when you're playing football is to complete the pass to the guy that you're trying to throw it to. So I did not put them in there. My number five worst quarterback, Baker Mayfield. 
Ooh, I love he, Baker, he, but I, I, I'm not, I might not be able to argue with that. He, he has the fourth worst completion percentage in the NFL. The only people worse than him are Arnold Donald, I mean, um, Sam Donald, uh, Drew Locke, and Carson Wentz. The only three quarterbacks that have a worse completion percentage. He has the third lowest amount of yards thrown for out of any quarterback that's played in at least nine games. And he has the seventh least amount of touchdowns thrown for any quarterback who's played in more than nine games. So he's my number five. Wow. All right. All right. All, all I can say about um, Sam Donald, his coach even came out today and admitted we've done a poor job coaching him. So he's had bad leadership. Why isn't Adam Gase fired yet? Why he, shouldn't he be on the hatchet block yet? I don't get it. But uh, you know what? I'm not going to argue with that list. Tommy, what do you think? Tommy agrees. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow. Baker, made, Lamar Jackson, man. Whew. Maybe, I don't know about Lamar. I mean, he still wins games with his legs, but the stats are the stats. All right. All right. Let's get on. Let's get to our picks. I was five and one last week. What did you do? I was four and two. We were all the same. We had the same picks all the way through, except for the Arizona New England game. And you, you picked New England on that one. I had Arizona. So that was how you got, you gave the game, game on me. All right. This week, there's some trap games. They don't – wouldn't appear to be trap games, but they really are. Starting out with this one, New Orleans at Atlanta. And Taysom Hill, I, I mean, he hasn't been stellar at quarterback passing-wise, doing well running. But if you could contain him, I don't know. Atlanta played unbelievable last week, upsetting Vegas 43 or whatever it was, right? Oh, they crushed him. They crushed him. Yeah. So what do you think and, here? Yeah, and they're at home, and they're building off that momentum. It is a division game. New Orleans on the road in a division game. Usually those are tough games. Those are tough matchups. And that's why I think you're seeing the line as small as it is. Three points? I think that line is also influenced by the way that Atlanta played last week and the way that they crushed the Raiders. So um, I think they might be a little off there. I still got to go with the better team and the better talent, and that's despite the fact that Taysom Hill is going to be running the offense there. It's still New Orleans. I'm with you. I got New Orleans as well. All right. India Houston. This is another trap game because Houston has a horrible record. But since Romeo took over, they've been playing well. This game's only, what, three and a half points spread, I believe, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you think, India Houston? Yeah. I mean, obviously, Indy disappointed us last week with that, with that loss to Tennessee. They kind of lost big to Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Part of that was because they didn't have their front seven intact on defense. They do have those guys back this week. They're healthy. Uh, we also got to look at the suspension of Will Fuller. Will Fuller, it was a, it was a go-to receiver for Big Deshaun. Loss. Yep. Um, you got Cootie coming in to replace him. Not the same caliber wide receiver. I think Indy can get to Deshaun probably, make him throw the ball a little bit quicker. So based on that, I'm going to have to go with Indianapolis on this one. All right, I'm with you on that one. Pats coming off that big upset, beating Arizona last week. Your playoff team. Going to the charges, Justin Herbert right now, the rookie of the year, is clinched. I don't know. It's a pick em game in Vegas. What do you think? Yeah, it's tough. And you know what? I've been, I've been wrong on the Patriots games the last, like, three or four weeks. I think I picked them over the Jets, and they barely beat the Jets. But other than that, I think I've been wrong, like, in four of the last five weeks or three of the last four weeks or something. So I'm not – it could go either way. I kind of want to pick the charges just to say, okay, I'll pick the charges and the Patriots will win. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, but you know what? <laughs> New England is going across the country on the West Coast. Um, they're coming off another win. They've been up and down. They've beat the teams they should have lost to. They've lost the teams they should have beaten. They're very hard to figure out. But I will tell you what the X factor in this game is going to be is Austin Eckler. Um, just because he does add a whole to that offense and what he can do. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. He's probably one of the leading receiver backs in the NFL over the last few years. I know he's been hurt most of this year, but he came back and looked pretty good in his first game back last week. So um, because of that X factor, I'm going to lean towards the charges in this game and take the, take the charges. Whew. I'm on the fence, but I think Bill finds a way to beat a rookie quarterback again. I'm going to take the patch. All right. Buffalo at San Fran. Why this game is as close as it is? It what is? It was a pickup, but now it's one point for the, um, the Bills as the favorite. But still, San Fran, who just beat the Rams last week, who we were touting as the you know a playoff team. I don't know San Fran. And I said it earlier this year that Kyle Shanahan is going to be the coach of the year, even though they're going to have a losing yeah. record. What do you think? 
Yeah, and you know what? They've been decimated by injuries, but I'll tell you one thing. Mostar is back in the lineup, and he's a good run. And Buffalo's run defense is not that good. So if San Francisco can control the clock, run the ball, keep Allen off the field, I think they have a legitimate shot here. Plus, Buffalo has to go all the way across the country. Um, so, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the 49ers in this game. Ooh, all right. I'm going to – I don't know why, but I'm going to take Buffalo. I think they pull it out, but I think you got a good pick there. All right. We're going to talk a couple playoff potential games here. Cleveland goes to Tennessee. We already talked about Tennessee. You already said they're in the top five. Who do you like here? Yeah, you know, and these are the top two rushing offenses in the NFL. They yeah. Number one, Tennessee's number two. Um, you know, Cleveland does allow – 108 yards a game rushing. Tennessee allows 115 yards a game rushing. Top half of the league, but still, they can expect both those numbers to get blown out by each other's uh, running offenses. Um, so, I don't know. This is a really tough, close game. But based on the way Tennessee's been playing and the way Rabel's coaching that team, I think they are the better team. And when two teams play each other, like this, you got to go with the better team. And I think Tennessee is clearly the better team here. So I'm going to take I'm with it. you on that one. All right. The, the last one, the Rams go to Arizona. This is a playoff knockout game, I think, right? Yeah. I mean, Arizona more so because Arizona's sitting at six and five. The Rams are sitting at seven and four. Um, Arizona right now is the number seven seed. As a matter of fact, if they lose this game and Minnesota wins, which they should do against Jacksonville this week, that's going to put Minnesota into that seven spot, which will be good for you, Z, because I know you picked them to make the playoffs. So, um, so that'd be interesting. But you know what? It's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> Arizona, <laughs> Arizona, <laughs> they are struggling. They've lost two in a row. They've lost three of the last four. They're holding on to that seven spot. But you know what? What makes this game interesting is the number two offense in the NFL is the Arizona Cardinals behind the Chiefs, right? The number right. two defense in the NFL is the Los Angeles Rams. So we have a big, you know, uh, matchup here in that regard. So it's going to be an interesting close game, but I'm going to lean towards the Cardinals. They're more desperate. They have to win this game. Cardinals for me. This is a playoff game. The Rams have playoff experience. Arizona doesn't. I'm taking the Rams. Wow, we're different on three this week, huh? Yeah. All right. All right. Good show, fans. You heard the A to Z list from PB. We rolled it out. We'll be doing this more often. Thank you very much, PB. Good show. Have a good weekend.